I bought three broken Sega Game Gears. One of them includes this cool blue one that comes with the case. We'll work on this blue one last. Let's check out one of these black ones and see what we got going on. These are the two black Sega Game Gears, but this one, this is the blue one. It comes with the case, it comes with the car adapter. It actually comes with the DC adapter too. I have that plugged in already. It comes with these two instruction manuals, the Game Gear instruction manual. And then it also comes with Sonic Hedgehog 2 and Sonic Tails. I've never played Sonic Tails. I'm not even sure I've played Sonic Hedgehog 2, so I really want to get this working so we can try that game out. This blue Sega Game Gear with all this stuff I paid $80 for. I don't actually really know what it's worth. I'm not up on the Game Gear market, but I think it was worth it to me. I think it's going to be pretty fun if we can get it working, but we're going to start by checking out the black ones and then do this one last. And overall, this one, it's got some adhesive on the screen. This screen is pretty scratched up. The screen uh, protector here. And let's check battery compartment. Actually looks okay. Those ones might need to be cleaned, but really not too bad there. I do have the AC power adapter, so let's plug it in and see what's going on. And we have, oh, we've got a line on the screen up there. Just a horizontal line there. Let's put a game in and see what it does. See if anything changes. Oh yeah, we got more lines up on the screen there. I don't hear any sound coming out of it either. No sound at all. Okay, so let's get this taken apart. See if we can figure out what's going on. I've only fixed a couple Game Gears in my life, so this is sort of all new to me. Looks like we got a game bit up here and some Phillips screws down here. This looks like the larger game bit, and it is. All right, there we go. And then I'm using a Phillips number one for these screws down here. Okay, I think that's all the screws. Is this just gonna lift off for me? No, of course not. Of course there's some cables attached still. Okay, it looks like we got, this must be the power board over here. And this is, no, yes. And this is some other board. Pull up on this side. Yeah, there we go, okay. Okay, and one more right here. There we go. Okay, so we'll probably need to take a look at this power board just to make sure it's working properly. It doesn't seem to have an issue with getting power, so that might be just fine. Now, what I do know about these is they have an issue with these old capacitors. So the first thing we're gonna do is inspect this area, and then we're just gonna go ahead and replace them, but it looks like maybe I see a leaking capacitor right here. Let me show you what I mean. So right here, we've got like kind of some gunk on the board. It's actually not coming up with that. Let me go with the trusty dental pick. There we go. There's some sort of gunk on the board over here. It looks like this capacitor is probably leaking. And we've got some more over here. So I'm guessing this one, yeah, this might be as well. This one's actually got a little bit of gunk right on the top. This one down here doesn't look too bad. And these ones over here, this one looks like maybe it's causing a problem. And possibly that one as well. So we definitely have some work to do here. There's also what looks to be maybe a dead bug. <laughs> I got this capacitor kit from Handheld Legends. It looks like it's from Retro 6. They also have a guide to help you do this if you're not sure how, but that's what I have. So let's look at these and make sure they have everything we need. So we've got one UF, 10 UF, 100 UF, and then capacitors for the power board, which is good because we might need those as well. Now it is important to note that the reason I'm just replacing all these capacitors on here is because of such a known problem on these game gears. There's no point in really doing any diagnostic work or anything like that 
when we have known bad and some leaking capacitors on the board. So that's why I'm just going to get these replaced. And then once they're replaced, then we can see what works and what doesn't, and if we need to do any further work on this thing. I think I will take this board out of the rest of the shell. I don't think that's necessary in order to do this job, but with it in the shell, you know, I might slip or I might accidentally rest my soldering iron along the edge of the case or something, and I wanna make sure this case stays in good condition. So I'm gonna go ahead and just remove the board out of the shell. I also do wanna check the screen and connections and stuff like that, so that's just gonna make that all easier as well. I don't actually know how many of these screws have to come out. I don't remember doing a full disassembly on one of these. I've taken one of these apart to this point before, but I don't know if I've ever done like a full disassembly. So I think these probably need to come out. Okay, I think we need to pull these out too, and these out too. Okay, now, yep, there we go. Oh, the screen's even gonna come out too, good. This is good too, because we can clean off the inside here if it needs to be cleaned off. We can check the condition of these button pads which actually are in pretty good condition. We'll probably do a quick cleaning on them, but they're really not bad. And then we got the speaker down here that we'll need to test if we find that the speaker is faulty. So I don't see any immediate issues with the screen. I'm hoping the screen is good, but you just never know on these things. I wish this would just unplug or something, but the screen flex cable is soldered directly onto the board, which is kind of frustrating because that means it's got to sit right on that when we're doing this work. But what I'm going to do is actually put it up on some tape like this. That makes it so it's not resting directly on the screen glass or anything like that. Now I think we're ready to get to the soldering. So right here you can see what looks like some corrosion I believe from this capacitor. So that could have something to do with why our Speaker's not working. Wait, is this even the speaker? I don't even know if that's for the speaker now that I just said that. Either way, that corrosion definitely can be causing a problem. So what we need to do now is break this free from the adhesive on the bottom. And then there's one solder point here and one solder point right over here. But we have to figure out the best way to break this thing free first. I'm not sure what that is. Right offhand. Oh, there we go. That wasn't too difficult actually. So I'm gonna flip it up a little bit and then get my soldering iron under here. Actually, I might be able to do it from there easier. I'm gonna put some flux in there then bring in my soldering iron and see if I can pull that off without affecting any of the traces. If we tear off a trace, it's not the end of the world, but it's definitely easier if we don't. So I am just using my metal dental pick to kind of get the flux down in there. Now let's see if we can desolder this thing. Okay, I think we got one leg. Gotta get to that back leg though, that's, that's an issue. And that smells disgusting. I need to turn on my, my air filter. There we go. And now the first one, and probably the hardest one, is done. Now we can move on to these guys right down here. And I'll show a couple more of these and then I'll skip the rest so it doesn't get too boring. So I'm just going to take my pliers and just pry on them just a little bit, just enough to break that glue loose. I mean, that's the goal anyway. There we go. And there we go. Now we can add some flux down here. And you can see that I'm a little shaky today. That's because it's lunchtime and I haven't eaten in a few hours. So a lot of people see me soldering and think that I'm just really not shaky, really calm all the time or really steady all the time. And that is just not true.
And that is looking pretty decent. One of the things that kind of worries me is it looks like this via that goes from this side of the board to the other side could be corroded all the way. I can't quite tell. We definitely have some corrosion there though. But we have these capacitors installed. They look great. There's another via that might have a problem. So we might need to revisit this area once we're done replacing all these capacitors. So I'm gonna get the rest of these done off camera. Then we'll be able to come back and see if there's any other work that needs to be done and get it back installed into the rest of the case and see if it works after this. So next we have this capacitor and this capacitor. We're putting 100 UF capacitors in their place. So I'm gonna do kind of the same thing I did on the others. Kind of break them loose first, try to. This one's a little more difficult because there's this kind of rubber piece here. Actually, let's do that after we get this one off. We'll do that one because then there's a little more room back there. Got to have my fume extractor going during this, so hopefully you can still hear. I'm going to put on some flux. Just makes everything go easier. And my soldering iron is hot and ready. So we'll remove this one first. I'm actually doing this left-handed, so hopefully... This goes okay. Just happens to work better with my left hand. On this part. Come on. There we go. I can try and break this other one loose. See how that goes. Oh yeah, easy. Perfect. Actually, every time I pull my soldering iron out, I go ahead and run it through the, uh, what you may call it, the, the copper shavings. It just cleans it all, cleans all the uh, oxidation off of the tip. It makes it work a lot better. Adding some fresh solder to my soldering iron. I'll solder over these points right here. Oh, that point. I'm not sure what's going on on that solder point. Let's add some more flux first, though. Let's see if we can clean this thing up. Ah, there we go. It was just super dirty. Probably, it was probably that leaking capacitor. So let's add some more solder to this pad. There we go. And add plenty to these pads as well over here. Okay. That is looking pretty good. I'm gonna add a little more solder just because these capacitors are like a little bit smaller. A little, they're not quite as long, I guess I should say, as the original ones that came off. So I'm gonna add a little bit of, a little bit of extra solder just to make sure we have plenty on there. Actually, I need to clean. This one's not that clean either. It's kind of giving me some problems. There we go. That's better. Okay, I think we're good now. I'm going to wipe that off and add some fresh flux. This is pretty dirty from when those capacitors leaked, so let's get this cleaned off a bit. There we go. Now we'll add fresh flux. I'm actually going to tin the pads on this capacitor first. There we go. I'm just moving it so I can flip it around and do the other side. And there we go. Now I'm going to come in. I need that to be a little straighter. I don't want it to be too crooked. There we go. I'm going to put some pressure down. Okay. There we go. How does that? That looks pretty good, actually. All right, tin up one side and then the other side. Just straightening it up. Don't want it to look too much like a barbarian did this soldering job. Okay, good so far. I'm gonna add a little bit of extra solder over here. I can definitely use some extra. I'm, put, I'm keeping my tweezers down on this just to make sure that it doesn't kind of pop up or anything or move out of place. Okay, and that looks pretty good. Now we have one more. That is the 100 UF, and that is this one right here. 
Yeah, it looks like this one probably leaked too. Gonna break it free. That's some pretty serious adhesive they have on there. I mean, it's not like super glue or anything, but it took quite a bit for my pliers to break that free, so. Now, putting a bunch more solder on my iron. When I have more solder on my iron, that makes the solder on the board melt easier. Solder, solder to solder melts really easy. So, generally speaking, there are exceptions, but there we go. See how easy that was? Adding even more solder to my iron. We're just gonna make sure these pins are nice and clean. We have some nice fresh solder on there. Look at that, this pin is still kind of dirty. Let's put some fresh flux on. That's gonna help us out for sure. Now, I do use a paste flux because it burns off not nearly as fast. It stays on there a lot longer, so. And I'm actually pushing down in my iron a little bit, trying to clean this pad with it. There we go, that looks much better. Now I'm just gonna soak this capacitor in some of the flux. tin up each side. You don't have to tin these, but it does make it easier to solder them on once you get it in place. I'm all about easy soldering, so there we go. Yeah, I'm going to put a little bit of pressure on it, just like that, and solder the other side. And there we go. And those are all the 100 UF capacitors. Let's move on to these two right here. One right there and one right there. Next, we have these two capacitors. These are each one UF. This shows the size compared to my finger. So, I mean, they're small. They're not tiny like a lot of stuff that I work on, but they're definitely small. And let's break them free. That one's broken free. Ah, well, there's the inside of it. Come on. There we go. Okay. There's the other one. Good. Okay. There we go. Oh, that was cool. You could see the solder solidifying right on this capacitor. Very cool. Okay. Those are done. Now we've got one, two, three, four more to go. And these are all the 10 UF, I believe, because we're done with the ones and we're done with the hundreds. I don't remember where my 10 UF went. There they are. Okay, and we have one, two, three, four of them. And patient number one is right here. This thing has a ton of glue on it. All this kind of cream colored stuff over here. Interesting. Not sure how this is going to go, but we're going to flux it up and then see how well it comes off of there. That's some pretty strong adhesive there. But a lot of times you can just melt adhesive off with your iron, so let's see if it works. Oh, yeah, we're going to be able to get that just fine. Just make sure if you do this that you have a fume extractor around you because this stuff s smells, usually adhesive smells disgusting. Okay, good enough. Let's see if melting this solder will free this thing up. Oh yeah, I think so. And there we go, ew. Now we definitely need to clean this up. Come on, there we go. 
Got it. The rest of the the rest of that um, adhesive we can just deal with. Let's get it all cleaned up first, and then we'll install our capacitor there. See how this is just kind of blobbing up on one end? That's because this is dirty over here, so got to get that cleaned up a little better. I mean, technically I don't. It would work just fine because the capacitor will fit on there, but I still want to just because it's just kind of gross with it being that dirty there. I want to make sure I got a really solid connection here, so... If it's dirty, it's much more difficult to have a good solid connection. That's getting better already. That's good enough for that one. This one, I'm having a hard time keeping the flux on this one. But it's actually coming along okay. Okay. That looks good. Need to make this thing straighter. That looks better, I think. Yep, better. Okay, good so far. Now I'm gonna push down. I want this nice and flat on the board. There we go. Okay, now I'm gonna clean that up, just inspect that and make sure that joint looks good. So you can see there's a nice, nice connection here, nice connection here. This is fairly flat and straight, and that is what I'm looking for. Okay, good, now we just have two more to go. No, three more to go. Let's try and break this loose. Got it, almost, come on. Oh, it's still got adhesive on it, on the bottom of it. There we go. So you can see this black stuff right here. This is the, the dirty joint. And this is probably a combination of a leaking capacitor and maybe some of the plastic from the capacitor. So that's what I'm rubbing off with my iron. Oh, Got to get the right angle here so it can get on there straight. There we go. Now going straight north on the board. We've got one and, wait a second, one and where's, oh, it's hiding under here. There we go. Okay, so break it loose, break it loose. Those ones are easy. These are the last two on this entire board. Here we go. This one's close to that other capacitor that, or the resistor right over there. Ah, both of them. I don't know if those are supposed to be connected like that, so I do need to fix that. Let's come in like this. Move it apart. There we go. Now this one's turn. Is this one close to anything? Yep, it's close to another capacitor. Hey, there we go. And I think we're done. So we've got this capacitor, this capacitor, this capacitor, this one, this one over here, this one over here, this one down here, this one down here, this one over here, this one up here, and this one over here. We've got all those replaced. They all look great. Now we need to get this board back into the rest of the case and then hook it all up and see if it works. We got a bunch of dust on the screen, which I definitely don't want, so... Can get almost all of it with canned air. Actually, I can probably get it all when I get a new can. That can's getting kind of weak. Got a little bit down here, but I'll get a new can of that so we can finish that up. The rest of everything, as far as I can tell, looks pretty good. So let's get this thing back in and test it out. Oh, we better clean the inside of this though first because there's no point in cleaning that screen off if we don't clean the inside of the screen protector here. I just used some canned air on that, so 
that I think is good to go. It doesn't feel like it's in there how it should be because it's not. Got to get this button pad down there. There we go. Okay, now we can put some screws in and get the back cover on and we should be ready to go. Now we might have to deal with this power board as well, but I want to see if what we've done so far has made any difference or if we need to deal with the power board itself. So let's put it back together like this and just see what happens. I'm not used to these connectors. They're kind of strange for what I'm used to seeing. But there we go. Now we can close it up and put the screws in and give it a try. And before we get too crazy here, we need to get this adhesive off of the screen protector here. Might just need to replace the screen protector at some point, but for now, this will make it at least usable. And now, game in. Power cable. Okay, is it gonna turn on and what's the screen gonna look like? Let's find out. Okay, can we, is that, can we see the screen? Where's the, oh, look at this. Oh. Okay, no sound still. Zero sound, but we get a picture on the screen. Look at that. Let's see, you can see that about right there the best probably. Okay, so that actually looks pretty good. Zone one, act one, okay. Wow, I have never played this before. Whoa, I have no idea where I went. Okay, so this screen is working, but we gotta get this speaker working. I do have a new speaker, so let's plug a new speaker in and see if that'll work. Okay, old speaker right here, take that out, and new speaker, there we go. Okay, game, let's plug it in, turn it on and see if it makes any noise. Come on. I I think it's supposed to be making noise right there. Yep, just zero noise. Okay, so we gotta figure out why there's absolutely no sound coming out of this now. And we've got a speaker board here, but also it could be, you know, something down in here too, it looks like. So let's see if we can figure it out. I think what we need to do next is pull off this audio board. This is the volume wheel here. And these are the capacitors that often go bad in the audio system as well. So let's get this metal cover off and then we can take a look at that board. At least initially, I don't see anywhere that they are leaking, so that's good news. Okay, and there we go. Ooh, we got something going on down here. Don't know if that is from the capacitors or not, but got what looks like some corrosion down there. All right, let's get this under the microscope, take a look at these capacitors and get them replaced. So it looks like Actually, I think these capacitors might be actively leaking. We're getting some grime on this board that is probably from that capacitor leaking. So we definitely need to get these replaced. We've got one, two, three, four, five capacitors to replace. And I'm gonna basically use the same method that I used for the other capacitors. I'll put some flux on the joints and then I'll bring my hot iron in, melt the joint while I pull up on the capacitor, and then come over and melt the other side while I pull up. And these look like they're probably also glued down. I might need to hold it, hold this with pliers while I do that to release it from the board. And then we'll come in and install the new replacement capacitor.
And all of these five capacitors are all soldered on. The rest of the chips seem to look fine to me, so let's get this put back in and see if that fixes our audio problem. And with this all done, just need to slide it into the little holes in the cutout for the switch. There we go. And then we just got two screws to hold that on. I don't usually screw my screws all the way in with this kind of stuff until I have both of them in, just in case. You know, sometimes if you screw one in all the way and tighten it all down, but this hole is a little bit uh, off or it needs to be aligned a little bit, then, and you try and just put a screw in there, then it can cause a problem and cause it to misthread. But with both of them loose, you can just make sure and get the screw right in the right place. So we've got the soundboard installed. Now we just need to get it plugged in. I really hope this works. Wait, <laughs> there we go. I might need to replace the speaker still. Let's see how it sounds though. Don't need to replace it if this one works just fine. Okay, there we go there. Okay, good. Well, let's see if this thing is gonna have sound now. I really hope it does. Game installed and powers in. Make sure the sound is all the way up. And... <laughs> oh, that sounds beautiful. That is awesome. And we now have sound on this Sega Game Gear, so this one is totally fixed. Let's move on to the next black one and see what it needs. Oh, and also don't think I forgot the metal plate or putting all the screws back in. I'm just gonna do that off camera since the reassembly is kind of boring. Yeah, this is the one that's definitely gonna need these battery contacts replaced. I might be able to get away with cleaning them, so I might try that first. Let's get the rest of it apart though and have a look at the motherboard. Okay, let's see the inside. Oh man, look at this. Look at all that corrosion, holy cow. Oh, we got all sorts of corrosion all down here. We even have a capacitor that's like popped off the board. What happened there? That is weird. It looks, I don't know if it, it probably just corroded off. I bet that's what happened. Wow. So this is the VA4 version of board. This this shell looks a lot newer than the one we just looked at before. Okay, so I think what I wanna do here is remove this entire board so we can just really give this a good cleaning and then uh, it looks like we'll probably have to replace these capacitors as well. So this one, I'm gonna pull this connector off here. I'm gonna use my pliers and just pull on this little green part. It's kinda of hard to see but gotta pull carefully, especially this old stuff gets real brittle. So just gotta do this super carefully. There we go, got that one. And then this one, need to make sure there's no wires that get caught in the teeth of my pliers here. And then we should be able to pull, come on, there we go. Okay, oh, and speaker connector. I usually don't pull on just the wires, but Sometimes there's just nothing else to grip down in there. So, okay, so we need to clean this off, that's for sure. So that corrosion is just eating away the coating on here even. It looks like probably just paint maybe, but just a bunch of it. That's just crazy that that capacitor came off the board. Let's get a little closer on that. So there's the pins on the board and there's the capacitor and it's just totally corroded away. I hope the pads are okay there. Don't know what the chances are of that. It's a little crunchy in there, that's for sure. I think maybe the pads might be in there. I mean, if not, it's not a big deal. These traces are so big, we can build a new trace to go to this capacitor, but wow. Okay, I think these pads are okay. What we'll have to do, once we get our hot iron in here, then we can really see if that's true or not. We're gonna have to really scrub on these pads to get all this corrosion off so we have something we can solder to, but we can worry about that later. Let's get this board out so we can have a better look at it, especially on the other underside here too. Okay, and with all the screws out, we can pull the board out. Definitely some corrosion in there, not too bad though in there. 
Let's look at the other side. Okay, that's actually not too bad. Okay, so I'm not worried about this side of the board. There's a little, a few spots of corrosion over here. The main thing we need to deal with is on the other side. Let's start with some isopropyl alcohol. Just give this board a good scrub down. And we'll be able to see a little more what we have going on here. Okay, and honestly looking at it, it really doesn't look that bad other than these two points right here possibly. But I think what we need to do is just replace all these capacitors just like we did on the previous board. And I'm gonna do that part off camera. You guys have already seen that. But what I will do on camera is get these battery contacts replaced. We need to give this a good cleaning first, then we can do that. I think I will take out the power board so we can really get in and, and clean all of that corrosion out over there. So let's get it out next. And there we go. The power board looks far as I can tell, undamaged. Even these contacts look good right here. So we may need to replace the capacitors on here as well, but as far as I can tell, everything looks mostly fine on this. We've got a little bit of corrosion on these and these. So let's just remove all of these and then we will fix them all up. So now I'm just gonna get a little bowl of vinegar. We'll see how these clean up. If they don't look too bad when we're done, then we'll just reinstall them. If not, we'll replace them. So I have all the capacitors on this board replaced, but before we get to the cleaning, I wanna check this power board to make sure it's putting out the amount of power that it needs. The Retro 6 Wiki has a diagram that shows which pin should have how much voltage. So we're gonna do those tests now and see if this power board is putting out those voltages. So plug it into power, there we go. We're gonna check DC voltage. This is a ground pin. This should be five volts and it's 0.5 volts. This should be five volts and it is 0.5 volts. This should be 34 volts and it's basically zero. Okay, let's flip this around. Make sure we have power coming in. So black probe on ground, red probe on positive 13.36. I believe that's how much voltage should be there. I believe this power switch is on, but let's move it over here just to make sure we're testing with the switch on. Let's make sure we don't get our correct voltages here. Yeah, we get nothing there now. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is replace these three capacitors on this power board, and then we'll retest and see if that gets it working. There are a number of ways that we could remove these capacitors. What I'm gonna try first is heating up each of these solder points. And I'll probably go back and forth a little bit and try to get them both liquid at the same time. I believe this is leaded solder, which means that the solder stays liquid a little bit longer than unleaded. So that might give me enough time to just pull the capacitor right out. And then after that, I will probably bring my solder sucker in or some solder wick and wick out the holes or suck out the solder from the holes. Then we'll put the new capacitors in and solder them to the board. But first, we've always got to start with a good amount of flux. Flux just helps the solder flow. I like to use a lot of it because that just makes everything easier if you have plenty of flux. Okay, and here we go. These are big capacitors, so I'm gonna be using my finger to pull down. And that is working. I'm just pulling on the side that is liquid. And that one just pulled right out. This one, I can get my soldering iron right on both of them. Oh, that was easy. And same with this one. Come on, almost. There we go. Okay, let's bring some solder wick over here. See if we can clean these holes out. That one looks pretty good. Oh yeah, that looks great. So I'm just gonna come in and install 
the new capacitors just like this. Oh, those holes didn't get all the way cleaned out and neither did those ones. I thought they were. Okay, well, let's do that first then. Now I came in and put some more flux on there just to make sure that there's plenty of flux. And then I'm going to solder these legs back on. So I have the legs bent right now and that's just to hold the capacitors in. I'm just gonna come in, solder them just like that. There we go. Now I'm just going to come in with my flush cutters and cut each of these wires. Actually, let's do these ones first. These are more annoying. There we go. Just need to clean it off, but it's as easy as that. And now let's check the voltages on here. We've got 4.9, 5.3, should have a ground, ground, and I think three grounds, one, two, three, yep. And 1.2, which is what we should have. This should be battery voltage, 10.6. This should be 34 volts. Uh, we've got 10, no, this is battery voltage. I think we've got, so we've got two pins of battery voltage, these two right here. Okay, and this should be the high voltage one, 44.8. Should be 34. I don't think it's a problem that it's higher, at least hopefully not. So that tells me that this power board is now working. And now that that's working, let's move on to getting the cleaning done. Now, before we get to the cleaning, let's just turn this on and make sure the thing even works. Oh, that didn't look good. Okay. Oh, we got lines on the screen and it comes on and turns right back off. Oh, there we go, we got it on. I mean, that's sort of good, I guess. Oh boy. I don't like having vertical lines on the screen like that. But also there's a game in it, the game's not playing, so I feel like there's something going on here. Okay, there's no point in cleaning it when we have this other stuff going on. So let's see if we can figure out this screen issue, this display issue, and then we'll move on from there. We know the power board's good, so that shouldn't be the problem. So there must be something go else going on on this board right here. Let's first try some resistance testing to see if we have any shorts on the board, and then we'll move on from there. So when I come down here to these capacitors down here, this should be the positive side. And we get a beep saying that that is shorted to ground. Positive side of that one, we get a beep. Let's try over here. No beep, no beep, no beep, no beep. Okay, so it seems like we've got an issue right down here. So one of the things that all of these are connected to, at least I think they're connected to, is this chip right here. I don't know if this chip is bad or not, but I'm gonna take it off and see if the short goes away. And after looking at the pads where the chip came off of, this chip is actually connected to the ground plane right here, and this capacitor and this capacitor are not connected to that ground plane on the plus side. It looks like they are. 
but they're actually not. So that chip has nothing to do with these capacitors. I'm not sure why these are showing up as shorted though. Unfortunately, there's no schematic on this VA4, at least that I can find online. So I'm gonna do a little bit more checking. I don't wanna call this one unfixable, but I'm just not sure if I'm gonna be able to fix this one, especially if I can't find any sort of schematic for it. And unfortunately, after checking this board out a little bit more, there's just no leads. I just have nowhere to go. There's just two shorted capacitors down here. And that's all I can find. I don't have another board unless this blue one is a similar board or the same board. I don't have another board co to compare numbers. I don't see a schematic anywhere. So right now we're gonna call this one maybe not fixable. Let's get this blue one opened up though and see if there's a board in that that is the same board and then maybe we can compare numbers. Now this one is the one that I really care about here. Let's plug it in and see what happens when we try and play a game. Okay, let's start it up. Oh, we've got moving horizontal lines. I think that's good news. I think that usually means that it's the capacitors, which obviously would not surprise me at all. Let's get it opened up and check them out. And once again, we've got some pretty nasty corrosion over here and even some down here. But we'll worry about that later. Let's get the rest of this thing apart. See how the capacitors look on the inside. There we go. Okay. Oh wow, look at this. Oh, is that just is that just glue? I think that's just adhesive. And we've got a VA1 board. Unfortunately, that means that we can't use this to test out that VA4 board, but we can replace all these capacitors. And maybe if we're lucky, that's all this one's gonna need. Famous last words, right? We got some corrosion over here. We can clean all that off pretty easily. So I'm gonna get all the capacitors on this replaced, all the capacitors on the audio board replaced, and then we'll put it back together and see if that's all it takes to fix this one. And now I have all of these capacitors replaced on this board. So this board is looking good. Let's get the battery contacts clean next. Oh, and here are all the capacitors we replaced out of these Sega Game Gears. I think it's safe to say capacitors are a major issue with Game Gears. So we just need to push down on this tab back here and that will let it slide through. Same at this side. And all the rest of these that don't come out will clean with it inside the Game Gear. Actually, that one's in pretty good condition. This one's not and this one's not. So we'll clean those for sure while it's inside this thing. These three though, we can clean in a little bowl of vinegar. And the good one, let's see what happens with this one. Oh yeah, look at that. That's bubbling very nicely. It's getting all that battery acid removed from this. So I'll just let that do its thing for a little while. And then we will work on the battery contacts that are still in the game gear. I'm just gonna take a toothbrush with some white vinegar on it, drip it on there and that will react with this battery acid and remove it. I'm gonna use my dental pick to scrape a little bit off as it's, as it's going here, just to speed up the process. Also wanna make sure it gets behind this one too. So we'll do that. Actually, that is looking pretty good. Unfortunately, the coating on this is not as good as it could be, but I think it's still gonna work fine. I'm gonna soak this up with a Q-tip. I don't think this will ca cause any long-term damage with the plastic, or short-term for that matter, but I just wanna make sure. That's also getting off some of the rust, so. Okay, that one's looking pretty good. Next, we need to do this one. Also, I'm just gonna drip it in over here as well just to neutralize any of that battery acid. That just comes right off with the vinegar on it. 
Makes it super easy to clean these things. Now, some of you guys mentioned that I should do this with uh, the Game Boys that I fixed a while back. I'll link that video here in a second too, so you can go watch that if you want to. And looking back on it, I probably should have done that. I think I used um, isopropyl alcohol. And I mean, clearly this vinegar is just working really nicely to get this off. So that will probably be my go-to for anything like this in the future, because it does just come right off. And now this battery contact, I mean, it looks basically brand new. We don't have any problems back here, it doesn't look like, so it's mainly just getting all of it out of here. And I will go ahead and soak this up with a Q-tip, and then we'll dry it out with some canned air and then air dry it for a bit just to make sure it's all nice and dry. Now let's go back to that bowl and see how those battery contacts are looking. So this one was the worst, and it actually looks really good. Front side and back side. I mean, as far as corrosion, you can see that some of the plating has been worn off. Some of the plating here has been worn off as well. But as far as the corrosion goes, that's just been totally cleaned off. I'm thinking I might want to go ahead and just replace this one since the coating is worn off of this part. But these two look pretty much brand new as well. So we're going to put our brand new battery contact in right here. There we go. I wish they put in the springs that are similar to the original. They don't do that on these uh, replacements, but the good thing is it's brand new and I know it's going to work really well. Next, this one goes in just like this. Got to push it a little more down to get it to click. There we go. Clicked in. And now same with this one. And there we go. And now we can get this fancy blue one all back together and see if all that work we did fixed it. So speaker, audio cable connection, power connection. Then we can get the screws in and try it out. Okay, all the screws are in. Let's put the other two batteries in. Battery covers. <laughs> It'd help if I put the right one in the right place. Ah, uh, this is so nice looking. Game. Okay, we ready to test this? And here we go, let's test it and see if it's gonna turn on. Oh, look at that. It turns on, that's good news so far. Yeah, the speaker works, but does the game work? Sounds good so far. And the game does work. Now, one of the things that came in this lot that I bought is this handy gear. So I want to check and see if and how this thing works. I've never even seen one of these before. As far as I can tell, the game gear goes down in here like that. Okay. And this thing is like, I don't know if that's just for dust or water or what, but that's a pretty good seal on this. Okay, and now I think this just folds over like this, sort of. Then we got room for power down here. The on button's there. Let's snap this down first though. Okay, now open. And it should be a much easier thing to see. This screen is disgusting. Okay, let's try and power it on and see what it looks like. Oops, I took the game out. <laughs> Let's put the game back in. <laughs> game installed. Now let's try all that again. Okay, now let's see what it looks like when we turn it on. Can you, oh yeah, you can see that. Let's get it zoomed in a bit. Okay, this actually really magnifies this. This is kind of cool. It's kind of annoying how much, how much you have to really press on this. I have literally no idea how to play this game. But overall, this is pretty cool. Also, this bottom level here is pretty cool. Ah, lava. Ah! <laughs> 
Okay, so really that's pretty cool. My lights kind of get in the way, so you can't really see it as good as I can in, in real life, but that's actually pretty cool. I like this pretty well. That makes it a lot easier to see. So I was able to fix two out of the three broken Sega Game Gears. I'm super excited about this blue one. We need to get this case a good cleaning, and then we've got a great Sega Game Gear branded case to go along with the console. If you like this type of video, you'll probably like the video where I bought six broken Nintendo Game Boys to see if I could fix those. I'll put a link for that video up on your screen now if you want to come check it out and see how many of those I could fix. Be sure to check out all our new merch over at tronicsfix.com. Thank you so much for watching today, and I hope you have a good one.